Hi, everybody. My name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are the family that believes what? Uh, the laws as your commands are for all times that they're, they were not done away with. Uh, we believe that the laws are our guidestone, are what we follow every single day. We believe that our Messiah, who people know him as Jesus, is actually Yehoshua, that he was here to keep the law, he protected the law, he showed us how to follow the law, and he did it perfectly, and he died so that we have repentance of sin, so we can have to keep sacrificing animals every time we sin. Wait, are you telling me the laws of our Creator are not nailed to the cross? They are not. You know, he didn't, Yehoshua, which people know Jesus, didn't nail the cross. Peter didn't put him on the cross. Paul didn't put him on the cross. Well, he did fulfill the law. Yeah, he did because there was a prophecy, and that is what's called fulfilling the law. So Does that mean the, the law is abolished if we fulfilled it? Wrong. Why? Because that's not it. Well, um, all food has been made clean. Uh, according to who? Uh, the NIV translation. I don't think that's right. Well, that's what they said in parentheses. Well, we can't take what friends a man-made sick as a man-made footnote. Peter had a dream. It said slay and eat, and that's why all foods cling as well. well if you keep reading down the chapter, talks about uh, Peter even says himself, he goes, now I know it was not about food, but it was about teaching to the unclean people, the Gentiles. So are you saying that the laws, statutes, and commandments are still in effect today? Yes. And they're for all so. generations? Yes, that's what it says. It's for all generations. What about totally. skin color? Is it for everybody? For everybody. It says that Doesn't matter. The Hebrew and the stranger, and if you're out, if you're not a Hebrew, you're a stranger, you still follow the law and become a Hebrew. Well, that sounds pretty good. I think we ought to join in this thing. It sounds sounds like a good deal. Okay, for everybody who does not know, we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel, Rumble channel, Odyssey. This is the Yah Scriptures, the greatest English translation that is ever put out, and it is $70. It is a work of art. We hope it's going to be as perfect as we can possibly make this. It's 103 books. Um, these are the books that are added that you that have been ripped out, and they all have the name of our creator, the name of his son, all the, the forefathers. They've all been restored. Now, if you'd like the free version of it, it's absolutely free of charge, and it is a single column. It is revision five right here. You can download that. You can also download the Apocrypha. The, the first two downloads right here are Yah's scriptures. It is all of them. And if you'd like the eSword module, that's absolutely free of charge. It is there as well. And for anybody that wants to grab these books and put them in your library, or if you would like to help send these to prisoners, we are doing this as well. So if you guys, these are all Amazon. You can go to Amazon and these are very, very cheap. I think there's like a $2 markup on these. 100% of the profits go into the prisoners. Now, if anybody would like to send these particular books into the prisons, get a hold of us and we can get them in there. It's basically just order them. We ship them from Amazon right into our brothers and sisters in chains. And they, uh, these guys would love a lot of these books. We haven't shipped any of these books into them yet, these smaller books. But we've been sitting here uh, pasting emails. And Eli is my um, mad paster. Yesterday we went through, how many letters to our brothers did we do? Eight. Eight. So we did eight letters to our brothers yesterday. And when you are doing, um, the, the thing about the brothers and sisters in chains is that when you're in chains, they tax your family like a tremendous amount. For us to simply even send these emails out to these guys, it's a dollar per um, prisoner because we have to send them a 44 cent stamp and then we have to send them a stamp back um, so they can even get in communication with us. And so um, we did eight of those yesterday and there's a, a lot of fruit that is being born with these brothers. And the thing about these, these brothers in chains is once they get the uh, the bug, once they get the the... the I don't know what it is. Once they find Yah, they start passing it on into their brothers in, in chains. And so there's one brother, um, his name is Noe. And he was the one brother who brought a lot of brothers our way. But he's like a uh, little leader inside of these the, the prisons. And they're Torah keepers. These guys are all Torah keepers that have been, um, I guess conversion is the right word, but they have in, in their path. And another brother we have, <clears throat> his name is Larry, Larry Bronner. And he's really old. And a lot of these younger brothers have run into Larry back in the days. And so Larry has been, he's really, really old. He just, <laughs> he got into a lot of trouble and he's stuck there. But he is a heavy, heavy duty Torah keeper. And um, I talked to him a lot. And it's amazing how throughout the years, the other brothers, little brothers have said that they spent time with Larry and Larry helped them and got them on the path. And now they're, they're ready for more. So um, there's a lot of fruit to be born in the prison systems. And so we, we love our brothers and, and sisters in chains and we want to help them as much as we possibly can. 
Oh, and if anybody of you guys out there knows women prisoners out there, that's one thing we don't have any of because uh, obviously we're men. And um, I don't know how responsive the women are going to be. And maybe I can get Miss Nicole to write the letters to the, the girls um, out there. But if you guys have any women out there, we want to get them scriptures as well. And if you guys have any brothers or sisters in chains that you know of that are in a jail or that are in prison, get them over to us. You can email us at jboss008 at gmail.com. Email them and we will put them on the prison list, the email list. We will contact them, get their shipping address, and then we will ship them in the scriptures right now. We have a ton of the large print hallelujah scriptures that we are still shipping out to prisoners and we've shipped a tremendous amount of scriptures in. Um, and then once Yah's scriptures are available, we will be transferring all of those into Yah's scriptures and getting them this. Okay, now here we are, chapter 27. Anyone who can tell me what in the world is going on to this point? Um, so Dawid and, uh, rose to power. He started becoming a great leader in the army. Shaul saw that he was going to take over. And so he wanted to kill Dawid because he knew he would be the next king instead of his son. He was going to be the next king, so he... Dawid um, escaped for his life every time Shell tried to kill him. Shell who's been hunting him, they make peace. He flees. Shell tries to kill him again. They make peace. And uh, it's this endless circle that Shell keeps chasing Dawid, and Dawid is running for his life. He, Dawid has all these chances as well to kill Shaul and stop this, but he says he will not kill the anointed of Yahuwah. He will not raise his hand against Yahuwah. So he will. He just deals with it while he's while he's running away. Yeah, how would you like to end up with a father-in-law like this, huh? Bad, bad. That'd be terrible. Yeah, it'd be terrible. So it's probably best that you guys stay single for the... Are you guys going to stay single forever? Uh, probably. Probably. There's there's no hope out there, is there? No hope, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, Kate, are you staying single forever? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Probably, yes. That's Why is this sad, Mr. Cole? She wants grandkids. Uh, well, sorry. We could. We had dogs. We adopted. Yeah, we adopted the dogs. I was gonna say Hannah had two kids. We, we could. We could really throw in some chaos and have another pack inside of a pack. We could do eighteen dogs together to see please, if we could live. Please no. See if we could live two years with that. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Cole. Probably not gonna have any uh, grandkids. The kids are very celibate here. They're very happy uh, away from the rest of the world, and um, it's probably not gonna happen. So here we go. Chapter twenty-seven. And Dawid said in his heart. Now I shall perish by the hand of Shaul someday. There is not better for me than to escape to the land of the Pelashites. Then Shaul shall give up searching for me any longer in part in any part of Yisrael, and I shall escape out of his hand. This one is going to some sort of treason or something. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, I guess the funny thing is, I guess I guess Shaul was a, uh, a name that is everybody used, right? Because we have uh, homeboy Paul, right, who wrote uh, uh, seven-eighths of the scriptures at the end. And brother Shaul Paul has all of these people thinking that there is no laws, that there are no appointed times, that there are none of this stuff. So um, I, I don't know. I don't think you should name your kid Shaul. That's my point. Two. So Dawid rose up and passed over with the 600 men who were with him to Akish, son of Maok, sovereign of Gath. And Dawid dwelt with Akish at Gath, he and his men, each man with his household. Dawid with his two wives. Achiom and Yiz, Yisraelites and Abigail, the Carmelites, Nabal's widow. These are such big words. Okay. Um, so David, so this dude, the, uh, the king of Gath, took in all of David's dudes, who we know of, what, like 300, 400 people? Uh, 600. 600. Well, I bet it's more now. You know, you know, With I, wives. So there's 1,200 people. wives, and there's just, and just I mean, it's double. So why do you think that this guy who was like competition to the Israelites would pull in and, and secure David, his all of his wives, his well, wives? Is, is if, if the song has got around, you know, David kills 10,000, Shaul and his thousands, then you'd want to do it on your side, if, especially if he's uh, like an enemy of my enemy is my friend. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, four. And it was reported to Shaul that Dawid had fled to Gath, so he sought him no more. And Dawid said to Akish, if I have found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country to dwell there. For why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? Okay, so what do we make of that particular uh, verse right there? Dawid wants to basically be like out in the field. He doesn't want to be like in the royalty of this place, right? He's not the king, so he's like, I don't belong here. He goes, let me have a field somewhere and not be around the royalty. Yeah, and that's that's the, the hopes and dreams of like most people is to move to the country, right? So he's not a concrete, uh, he, he didn't want the concrete kingdom. He's like, hey, uh, put him out there. But what we can find from this is that he must have been dwelling in the city, for a while. With, yeah, with these dudes. And so all of a sudden, a, a city would have had, uh, you know, you have 600 dudes. They probably are married. There's 1,200 people right there. Plus David, you know, 1,300 people just come moseying into the city. 
Okay, now, uh, do you think he, uh, do you think David's the only guy that moved to the country, or do you think everybody else moved? I bet he moved everyone to the country. You think they all moved to the country? He, I bet he kept his people with him. All right, six. And Akish gave him Zat Ziklag that day. That is why Ziklag has belonged to the sovereigns of Yehuda to this day. And the, the time that Dawid dwelt in the country of the Pelashites came to be a year and four months. And Dawid and his men went up and raided the Geshurites and the Gizurites, Gerzerites, and the Amalekites. For those nations were the inhabitants of the land from of old. As you go from Shur, go to Shur, even as far as the land of Mitzrim. And when David had smitten the, the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, but took away sheep and cattle and donkeys and camels and garments and returned and came to Akish. So this is a simple little verse, but inside of this verse, David just conquered some land. kills everybody. Everybody's dead, right? Um, and this is what... Uh, most of the soldiers of Yah were not able to do. A lot of them were not able to do just this. Right. And, and that's where Shaul's downfall started when he did not kill everything. Yeah, and it's 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 hard. These are hard things, right? When people hear that a, a the creator of the universe um, is okay with everybody being annihilated. Um, again, we, we're, we're dealing with corrupt DNA. And I'm not saying all these guys are corrupt DNA, but there was still corrupt DNA in the land. Um, the Pelashites definitely had all of the giants, and they had the, the, the giant DNA within them. And I think a lot of these, these people did as well. So um, let's continue on. 10. And Akish would say, where have you made a raid today? And I would say, against the south of Yehuda, or against the south of the Yerkimonites, or against the south of the Canaanites. David did not keep alive man or woman to bring news to Gath, saying, lest they inform us, lest they inform against us, Thus saying, thus Dawid did. And this was his practice all the days that he dwelt in the, in the county of the Pelashites. Um, so clearly it says right there a little bit more about this, that David was like killing them all so they didn't come and complain, essentially is what that, that said. Is that what you guys caught from this? Yeah, I think so. And basically, they, lest they inform against us, saying, David, Dawid did this, right? So there's nobody so to say no, that. No witnesses. Witnesses, yeah, they kill them all. That's it. Okay, uh, 12. And Akish trusted Dawid, saying, He has indeed made himself a stench to his people in Yisrael and has become my servant forever. How wrong he is. <laughs> we'll let him think that for now. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, I don't think we have anything else there. Anything else from anyone? Um, not yet. I mean, we just see the power of Dawid growing, how 1,300 men can wipe out entire cities. Yep. So. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a very good day. We love you. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.